Welcome to the final team's tips of this semester. And um, we're going to do it some different ways later on. You y'all know us by now. We're, uh, we're constantly switching things up. That's what keeps it fresh, you know. So um, we're just going to cover some little highlights today of some little things that we feel like might be kind of useful to you. And then we're going to leave an extended period of time at the end. <laughs> Maybe, you know us, we get to talking sometimes. And uh, at the end, that will give you some extra time to ask some extra questions. So maybe jot a question down if you got something. And uh, we'll try to answer that for you today. Sound good? All right. So I'm going to kick us off today. And one of the things that... Um, that we work on, uh, you know, that all of us are always looking at is um, how can we um, search for information? You know, once we put all this information on um, on Teams, how in the world can we find it? And uh, yesterday, uh, the three of us had a really, it's a tough little question from uh, someone in the legal department and they needed to search for keywords inside of documents in a multi-layered file structure. And it was kind of fun. <laughs> and Christy finally found the solution and we, uh, we were able to work through it. So that was a lot of fun. So here's what I'm going to do. I've just opened up one of the teams, you know, that, that I work in here. And I just want to show you a few, you know, five or six little ways to, to search for information, okay? So the, um, the, inf the search bar has just been updated recently, and it provides uh, some really neat updates. I'm going to show you those in just a second. So, of course, the first thing we could do is uh, there are some shortcuts built into Teams. And what you can do is just go right down here on the keyboard and hit that little slash mark, the one right under the question mark. And when you hit that slash mark, you're going to get a whole screen full of shortcuts. So like, for instance, if you needed to call someone, you could do slash call and give it a name. Or if you want to just mark your status as a way, instead of going up to your picture and doing the status thing and all this, you could just do slash away and Boom, it's there. So lots of nice little shortcuts here to um, to help us out there. So those little shortcuts will help some. But then maybe another way you want to search is just to go up here in the search bar. Now notice I'm not on any particular channel. I'm just in the, the thing here, right? I'm just going to type in, how about photos? All right, let's see what happens. I'll type in photos, and when I do... It's going to go stomping through all the areas inside of the teams that I work on. And it's going to show me all the places where I've related to photos. Okay. And notice this one's photos and photos and photos. I mean, they're just all over the place down here. Right. But look what they've added up here at the top. They've added these tabs that you can break it down where the, um, search piece is. So if I wanted to look in just messages, I could click there. Now I'm looking at just messages where photos was mentioned. All right. If I wanted to look at people, I could click people. Now it's showing me just the people that I've talked to about this particular area. Files, it's going to go looking out there and look at there. It's found a bunch of files that we used on photos. And then group chats and teams. I don't have any in chats. I must not talk those. And then teams and channels. There's one new, there's one teams out there. By the way, this is picking up again this summer. Um, so it's a nice way to, to search out there, okay? So, but maybe we wanted to have photos, but not have Photoshop, like came up right there. So what I could do is I could leave that photo word up there. I could put a minus sign and type in Photoshop. Okay, and now it's going to not ignore the word Photoshop and only look for the word photos. Okay. So that makes it really nice to do that. Now I could go in here and we could say photos 
and uh, what? Photos and workshops. Let's try that. So we're searching on two terms here, okay? By putting the and in the middle, and there it is. It's found them. It's found photos, and it's found the word workshop. And when it gives you the results, it shows you where it is. And you can just click on that particular item and go straight out to that particular uh, mention of that piece right there. So it makes it really, really easy to search on documents right there. OK, now you could also go in here and you could say, uh, let's do this. Let's do F-I-L-E-T-Y-P-E. -E. No shortcuts. Okay. I mean, no spaces. And we can say JPG. Let's see what happens. Goes out there now, and it shows me that I have three files out there that end in J, uh, that are JPG files. And down here, it shows me that I don't have anything in these areas, but I do in these areas. So that makes it kind of nice to just put in file type. Now, one more in this area right here, then we'll take you over to another spot. We could type in from and a colon, and I'll just say from Christy. Here we go. And so I do that, I type her name. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to stay in Teams. Come on now, I guess I couldn't hit that little thing. That's interesting. From Christy. Let's see what comes up here. There we go. So I did from Christy. I didn't take the, the drop down selection that I could do there. And now I'm looking at all the little areas from Christy. All right. So that makes it kind of nice. All right. So another thing that we just discovered yesterday was that if I go into a team here and I go into files, okay. And give it a second. My SharePoint's running really slow today, y'all. You'll have to bear with me. Okay. So I go to files here. So I'm in a I'm in a particular area, you know, a channel, and I go to the files area of that channel. But what I'm going to do is go way over here to the three dots. I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to say open in SharePoint. Now, what this is going to do, SharePoint gives you a little more details. A uh, little more ability to search deeper, I guess I should say, into this area, if it will please load. Maybe if I knock on my computer, hello, computer, wake up. Um, it's twirling up there. It's been running real slow for me today for some reason. All right, now we've opened in here, all right? Now, what we want to do, you got to be real careful here. There's a home button up here at the top left. Let's see if I can blow it up right up there. But there's also a home button word, okay? So if we type, if we click on the home button word, it'll take us to the home page for this particular site. All right. And then in a minute or two, yours is surely running faster than mine is. You're going to get a search window up here, and then you can do uh, a lot of those same searches. And, but one thing that we've learned here too, if you type in the word body, and then a, a colon, and then type in your keywords such as Photoshop. So I want it to look in the body of inside the body of documents, not just at the titles for that word. And it's going to go out here and do a little search for us. And in just a minute, look at here, it's pulling up all the documents that contain that word Photoshop that's in there. So those are just some quick little ways to do searches and. Um, you might um, enjoy playing with those a little bit. All right. That's mine for the day. I'm going to stop sharing. All right. I have a really quick one. Um, I'm all, and this is more fun, if you ask me. <laughs> then <laughs> just to change things up because, you know, we've all been doing Teams and, and Zoom for a little while now. And now we have these fancy backgrounds like, Rachel now has then the OIT one there. Steve's got, I think that's a Microsoft maybe selected one. Anyways, and today I have a blur behind me and that's on purpose because I want to show you this. Um, and then Steve even used the term that Microsoft described it as kind of like a frosted glass wall there that I will have behind me. Um, so I was going to very quickly show you all how to do that. Um, so I'm going to share my screen here. This is cool, y'all. If you're drinking coffee, stop. Pay attention. <laughs> this is so cool. 
<laughs> it's because I'm like, oh, I'm tired of looking at the same old thing. All right. So let me blow this up here for a second so you all can see it a little bit better. Um, all right. Let me get rid of that. Okay. So I've got your more actions here. So basically, this is where you're going to find some of those extra little things that we that you can do within Teams. So select your three dots. And down here in the video effects, this is where you would normally go to um, add that background or like me right now have that standard blur. But what I just found out from Microsoft yesterday um, was that you can now upload a transparent uh, image. And I did have one, so I'm gonna add that here in just a second. Now I did talk to our graphic designers because I really wanted them to prepare a an official one um, to make it very business-like and very UT-like so that um, you know it would be appropriate for a meeting within UT, outside of UT. So if this is something that you're interested in, definitely talk to your graphic designers your marketing folks, what have you, they can set you up with a, an image that would be a great addition to your background. So it's not just some crazy new picture of your cat back there or a dog or, you know, I, I haven't put my puppies back here, but anyways. So, all right, so I'm on standard blur and that's just kind of that default place, but I'll go here to add new. And then basically you navigate to where that transparent images and mine is in this file. So I'm going to select checkerboard and it's a, it's a super, super easy y'all. Um, select open. And now it has been added to my list of backgrounds here. Here it is. It doesn't really look transparent because it kind of has white there. But if I go to preview here, look at this. It's like this nice clear wall behind me and it's just something a little bit different. So I'm now gonna hit turn on it and my video. So now that transparent background is back there and it's just something a little bit different cause you know, I'm just tired of the other backgrounds. And I think we were talking earlier today. It actually makes my hair look a little bit better. Yeah, I need all the help I can get, but um, it's not quite as chiseled, that chiseled uh, cutout look when you do have a, um, a pretend background behind you. But that is my special little treat for you all today. So that, there you go. And Rachel's going to take it away. All righty. So I'm actually going to cover something um, that was asked in the Microsoft Teams uh, live event that we did last week. And if you missed that, um, we had 70 something people show up and I think we had a pretty good time and, um, it seemed to, to go pretty well, even with Christy and me doing it, part of it from the airport. Um, <laughs> don't recommend that. Uh, it is very stressful. So, uh, what I'm going to show you, it was a question someone had and what they were asking is, uh, they wanted to know how to connect teams files over if you are a, a windows person into your uh, little uh, file explorer so when you've got your team's files here you can see that i actually have the university of tennessee here but it's my personal and that should end up being if you're in active directory which all windows machines on campus are um, then you kind of get this one automatically and it's it's got your your personal files uh, on there but what they wanted was they wanted to be able to connect the files that were in their teams over to their file explorer. So let's look at how we've got that. I have a couple set up here, but I'm going to show you how to set up some others. So notice my personal uh, files are under Rachel dash University of Tennessee. And then the ones that I'm thinking will actually be under a separate University of Tennessee and they're close to my other network drive. So they're close to this PC, they're close to network. And each one of these, if I click on it, these are the files that are in that particular team. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And there's two different ways that you can see how to do that. So the first one I wanted to do was uh, our OIT team club and I've got the files here that I want to look at. 
And if I click underneath the three dots, or if I had this, I, I have mine zoomed in, you probably will actually have some of these options here. It just depends on what your zoom level is as to what is under your three dots. Uh, but if I click off of that, come on. If I click on the three dots, I can say sync. And it will give me, we're syncing your files. Um, sometimes it will say that it needs to install the latest version of OneDrive uh, because what this is actually doing is it's, it's setting it up as a OneDrive um, file system here. So I'm just gonna close that. And now you'll notice that I have the OIT Team Hub. Now, something to be aware of, this one here, when I did it, it has a ton of files in this team. And a lot of those files are really um, large photographs. It took about an hour for all of these files to actually get there. The OIT Team Hub, we have very few large files. Most of them are fairly small files. And so you'll notice that was almost immediate. Now, let's see if I don't wanna do it through Teams, there's actually another way of doing it through OneDrive because that's really all you're doing is you're um, going through OneDrive on there in order to see this. So let's open up my uh, Office 365. So if I went to office365.utk.edu and I came in here, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the little nine dot menu and I'm going to find OneDrive. Now, if your OneDrive is not here, you may have to go to explore all your apps to find OneDrive. So here's my OneDrive and let's say that I want to um, take this student coordination folder here. So I'm going to click on the folder that I want to sync and then I'm just going to say sync. So it's the exact same process. And you'll notice that it says we're syncing your files and it, it's talking about we may need to install the latest version of OneDrive. So it looks almost identical as it did through Teams. So now when I open up my file explorer, you can see that I have this fourth one here and it's already starting to sync. Now you'll notice that it does say syncing. So, oh, and it just finished. Um, that's what I was talking about, that maybe the folders show up quickly, but it might take a little while before the files are actually there for you to be able to access this way. But all this means is now if I wanted to open up um, a certain file on um, one of these folders, I could, uh, I'm trying to find a file that's safe to, to open for uh, the web here. Um, here we go. So I could just open the file directly from here and then that opened it up in Excel for me. And that is the file that is in a Teams folder. It's in OneDrive and um, I can make my changes through the app. And then when I close it, it will be updated all over the place. All right, so that was it for that. Um, we wanted to leave some time for questions for folks, and we did have a question uh, a few minutes ago uh, from Troy, and uh, Troy asked uh, if there was a way uh, to set up training for department heads, uh, where would be a good place to start? So the best place to start is the OIT help desk. That ticket will get to us. And we are more than happy to come out to your department, either in person, through Zoom, through Teams, whatever you want us to do. And uh, we do training that is geared just towards what you all need. We're actually doing a training tomorrow for, for a department um, that they just need a series, a short series of, um, you know, 15, 30 minute uh, tips during their, their meetings. So uh, we've also done two and three hour trainings. So it's, it's whatever your department needs and we'll, we'll work with you. And if you do want, can we, let's see, we've got, a, I have a loop question, Steve. Uh, is there a way to share your loop with someone as a view only, or do all collabor collaborators have edit permissions? No, I'm not seeing a way 
to just share the component just with one person. Um, Cause I'll go up to share up here. I've got the regular, well here, I'll just go to the component. Let's see what happens. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, see, it just copies a link. Let's see what the settings are. Uh, so it's it's like we thought in the beginning that it's just strictly for a um, to be able to to collaborate, you know, with one another, and everybody gets to play. Yeah, actually, Steve, I looked it up, and it says that if you have a Microsoft 365 subscription, then you get all the permissions. But if you don't have the subscription and someone shares it with you, then you get view only. So uh -huh. because all of us have access to Luke. Yeah, that's why we all have it. Okay. That's all of good us to know. It. Yeah. Yeah. But this if Luke I were thing, we are all didn't. still learning at this. It's um yeah. It's gonna be a fascinating tool once we all get plugged into it and figure out how it all works. And exactly. oh and y'all while we're waiting on that other question to come in, uh that sharing thing that the syncing that Rachel just shared, um, Rachel's on the dark side. She uses a PC <laughs> and um and I and Christy and I are on the the Mac side, you know, the bright and shiny. But anyway, um we played with this this morning, that same sync process, and Christy could get it to work somewhat. You know, it didn't look as pretty as Rachel's, and mm -hmm. I couldn't get it to work at all on mine. And so I don't know if it's just down today or what, but um, it should be available because the link is there, you know, that says sync. But for some reason, it wasn't working today. That's why we didn't talk about it yet. Didn't have to tell him that we couldn't get it to work. That's right. Well, no, I, I, I want him to, to be work. honest. It, it just looked different than yours. So. Yeah, yours looks really super cool. Yours doesn't look like it's on the dark side. It just really looks mm -hmm. great. <laughs> but one one thing to be aware of, if you are syncing, um, you definitely want to sync it from OneDrive or Teams, that folder, don't go into your personal files and try to sync the folders there because that actually has messed some folks up and um, yeah. it does not work as well. So uh, follow the the procedure that I just sent when you're when you're syncing. For sure. So um, I don't see any other questions. Uh, but we did want to say that um, this is, as uh, Steve, I think, mentioned, the, uh, the last one uh, of the semester. And um, have we decided yet what we're doing for fall? Uh, we have not. we're not doing anything no. for summer. No. Not for summer. Yeah. No. So, not yet. So Now, we will but, be offering a few little workshops during the summer, you know, that y'all may be interested in. Check out the workshop registration page though um i was i hinted to it a minute ago i'm going to be offering a uh, photoshop boot camp uh like i offered a couple of years ago and it's just was five monday or five wednesdays uh photoshop it was a lot of fun there's gonna be some other uh good workshops out there too you might find interesting and Christy and I will be working, uh, Christy primarily is the uh, clicker person for classrooms, uh, but, uh, and I'm her backup and she's my backup for the classroom technology. The classroom technology we do about two weeks before the semester begins, we have our 45 minute one-on-one -on -one consultations. So uh, make sure if you are teaching or you know someone who's teaching, have them sign up for one of those consultations because it is so much easier for someone to figure out the classroom technology when we can do it 45 minutes one-on-one. -on -one. And that's, right. um, that's actually tiny.utk.edu slash classroom consult. Uh, if, if you wanna sign up for that, I'll have those ready, but we'll put those on the OIT news page and um, IT mm -hmm. weekly and, and the monthly yeah. newsletter. So yeah. And um, be sure that uh, if you need us, you know, during the summer, you can reach us on Teams, right, on chat. Just type in our names, and we're glad to have. We're still here. We're still here every day. Just putting on different hats. <laughs> That's right. Yes, exactly. So, 
All right. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, we've enjoyed this entire, well, almost a year of all these <laughs> podcasts on Teams. We've learned a lot. I, I mean, I learned two new things today for that matter. So I'm not alone in the learning. Um, and we're continuing to keep abreast of all the new updates with Teams. So I'm sure there'll be a few of those. So we may push those out here and there in our uh, IT Weekly e-news and all those things. So be on the lookout for those. And then um, maybe look out, be on the lookout for um, our plans for the fall. So thank you. That's good. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful summer. Thank you.